Okay, hi, welcome to Liquid Lunch. We're here live from the Tula Lounge here at the top of the Harbor Castle Weston, and it's me, Hugh, and I'm here with Miranda Hello. Hill, who is, uh, this is your second time now. It is now. Co-hosting, right? Very pleasant. I'm Man. very happy to be here as far as this goes. And this is part of the PVN uh, business network. networking thing. Yeah. Well, this is like social networking face-to-face. -face. Yes. Now, I know you know a lot about social networking because we were just talking about it. Yeah. And that's your specialty, right? Social it, media? It's where I'm trying to, uh, you know, trying to fit in and uh, help everybody. Uh, but this PBM uh, concept, it basically just takes social networking one step further. Yeah. Because um, even if uh, you've got a website, let's say, if you don't have people who can see you know, the founders and what they're all about and them explaining it themselves. It's um, a little bit more removed for anybody that, you know, kind of takes a look at your website. So they'll stay longer. They might actually listen to 30 seconds of what you have to say. And that's uh, a little bit better. Well, plus, you know, the, you, the nice thing is you've got maybe a little bit of alcohol to lubricate the conversation, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for people that are wired that way, uh, because it's, uh, it's a beautiful environment and, uh, yeah, Great Tula. Place to it's do been it. yeah one of the main attractions for Toronto, and thank them, thank thank Tula very much for having us because it's uh, it's a pleasure. And PBN, Kareem and uh, well, Kareem has been working very very hard, yeah. and uh, he's put a, invested a lot of this into it, just having been friends with him for about ten years, and so uh, I'm very proud that this is uh, working extremely well for him. Well, it's uh, it's great, and uh, we better get busy because we've got a few of the, the PBN people here yes. to talk to, and we've got okay. our first one, Noel Wal Walrond, is joining us here. Noel, great to have you on the show again, because I know it's great to be here. <laughs> Not your <Yeah>. first time. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, we, well, we were just discussing before uh, before we came on that uh, when you were first on my show, that was when you first launched your business. Yes. Right, and now you're getting ready to launch. All kinds of great things for yeah, 2013. A lot, a lot's happened in two years. <laughs> so, so let's let's give people a little bit of an introduction to, to what you do. Awesome. Well, right now, um, for where we were at when we first connected, I was doing coaching with a lot of real estate brokerages and financial advising companies and people in general who just want to make their passions become reality. And so that that has been and it's so still part of my core. I love it. And uh, and I've watched. I've helped people literally who were working. Um, you know, in major corporations who decided that they wanted to go and create for themselves, now running their own businesses and they're up and running, which is awesome. You did know? they really want to do that or did they just get laid off and then switch to plan B? Actually, um, no, they became unemployable, which, is, and so once you start generating enough income where it's now becoming that income, that sort of space, yeah. um, it's actually costing you money to stay, yeah. you know, so it really, so the, so there have been people also who literally started from nothing who weren't working and we got, got them working, started getting the business. Part of the challenge is that just people seeing the opportunities that are in front of them because sometimes they're, right, they're all around us but we just don't see them. And until yeah. somebody says, hey, take a look at that, you know, then you're like, oh, so that's there, you know, it's, 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 we just didn't see it. it all, we all have blind spots, right? Having the courage to actually take that first step and to, from your point of view, you do motivational Absolutely. It's like if, well, from the time that your eyes get open to new, um, to new, it's almost like, for example, if you go on a computer, right, and uh, on, on a Windows program, I know all the all my Mac, Mac people will love this, but you, you <laughs> no, uh, I'm with uh, you, uh, no <laughs> Windows. No diehard. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you click on this, if you start click on the start icon, what happens? A whole bunch of possibilities that were always there before now become apparent. And you click on programs, and then a whole bunch of other options become available. They were always there, but you just didn't see them. You know what I mean? And so it's about opening up people's eyes to other things that they didn't necessarily see right there based on where they're at. Um, and so that's been great. And so now we've, um, um, fast forward to now, I had been thinking about the seminar, doing the seminar, getting into the seminar space. Mm -hmm. And my mentor, you know, Bob Proctor, he's obviously been very encouraging. And, uh, and I had the mentor, Joel Bauer, too. They're saying, no, no, you got a lot of good to offer. Like, um, you know, get out there and do, um, and do it. So what I've decided to do is I, I thought that the core issue with all the people that I've coached over the last two years that I've been finding, procrastination is the biggest yes. challenge for yes. people. Yes. And, you know, and uh, I see I got an amen I'm there. Looking, right? I'm looking <laughs> off to the yeah. side. Well, I yes, procrastination. 
fascinating. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so and and so because the, the, and I thought and I isolated sort of isolated the gene, if you will, where I fi- figured out how to get people past that. That's why they've been able to manifest. Because some people wanted to go make their passions become real, but they kept putting it off because they, whether they felt that they weren't smart enough or knowledgeable enough, mm-hmm. didn't have the background, didn't have yeah. the history, didn't have the support around them, whatever that happened to be. Mm-hmm. I guess um, they put it off, and because you put it, but. Uh, people don't understand the power of what happens when you put things off. There's all of a whole bunch of unintended consequences that come from yeah. it. Treading water. Uh, exactly. well, we'll just, I'll give you an example of something. Yes. You've, you've seen the movie Back to the Future, right? Yes. Now, do you remember back in that movie, there was a point when um, he went back into the future. In, I think it was part in section part two where um, he went back and he had the sports almanac. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, Biff, um, Biff, old Biff stole, stole the um, sports um, sports almanac from him. Goes back and gives it to his younger self. And now he's now now, B- now Biff goes and creates a whole. He goes, he goes to the track and he's and he's able to make all, hit all the winners. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now a whole new world became created. In you know that what one I mean? path just, that he just based on just because he took action at a specific period of time. Mm-hmm. Bip was on a specific time continuum or trajectory. That, as soon as he got the book, he went on to a different trajectory. Oh. So he was the same age. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I guess I'm going, but, but, but created a different world. You know what I mean? Um, um, and so when, I, when I'm on speech, I talk to my buddy Russell Peters about it. You know what I mean? I said, Russell, because we all grew up together in Brampton, what's the difference between Russell and other comics? He took action. You know what I mean? I guess, whereas other people thought about it. Yeah. You know? And, and, and so Director X, Little X, you know what I mean? Well, he used to be Little X, now he's Director X. Um, we went to high school together, gave us, gave us first flyer job. And most people talked about going to the States to create an opportunity. He got on the plane, he went to to High Blame Studios started out gophering and then he started you know to move up and started to make connections and well now he's doing stuff with Drake and Usher and all these guys making right and he's a worldwide name mm-hmm. so the difference between making the greatness the great things happen is taking action and so what I do is I help people isolate sort of what's going on internally I mean why we actually are procrastinating in the first place yeah. and I get people clear about the consequences of procrastination because I mean the one place that we all end up without question is the cemetery that's, that's all it's going to be all of our final resting places no we'll maybe not all of us it's, uh, yeah, it's you're, you're waiting you're waiting yeah, 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 you, got the, oh, you yeah. got the magnets you got the mighty yeah, magnets he's going to stay um, young forever but the question is what type of a life do you want to have? what's your legacy yeah. I mean what do you leave behind what is it that you what are you creating the space when we put things off for tomorrow we assume that we have tomorrow yeah. you know what I mean all you have and, is I guess, today. but there are car accidents that have happened today with people who left home thought they were going home nobody plans to die mm-hmm. you know what I mean I guess, and so it's something where we, we, none of us just happens to know what when things are going to happen and when they're going to show up what you have is the moment you have yeah. right now you've got the present and when you take action in the present even though we're all going to meet our inevitable what, um, you, you can choose to be in the best space when you do you know well I also think that it's a little bit of fear of failure and uh, uh, I was with Oxford Learning Centers and I couldn't believe these children are failing all the time and what makes them so different from adults the child will basically try and fail try and fail try and fail until they succeed they don't know what failure is as an adult we try and fail once oh my goodness that was scary we don't want to try it again and so I think the fear of failure which you can definitely make them overcome and realize that you know they are capable that's uh, wonderful and I think that I, I think too it's a really interesting point you make where you know the consequences of failing to act or acting get bigger as the future as you go out into the future like when you turn right instead of left that's a very small thing but your whole day proceeds from, from turning from, right from versus percent. turning left well Snowballs. you're absolutely right and also to speak to your point mm-hmm. um, the um, fear of failure is huge but you know Steve Jobs said it best mm-hmm. he said when you look at that's being life's best change agent because it's out with the old and in with the new because we're all on our, we're our replacement team which is our kids you know what I mean they're, they're, they're here right and it's something where um, when you recognize that you're going to die, then you realize you don't have anything to lose by trying. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. like this. And, and, and so you, we, he said basically in, the, in his Harvard commencement, Harvard commencement speech was that mm-hmm. we're basically all naked at the, um, at the yeah. end of the day, yep. and there's nothing to lose at the end of the day. So, so you're not sleeping in the house; you're sleeping on, uh, you know, on the floor. Honestly, Who cares? Yeah. at the end of the day, you're still alive. You still got help. You still have all these great things, right? Mm-hmm. So. 
um, the so when people come through the seminar and um, and my, what I'm actually doing, which is different than a lot of other seminars that are out there, the first two days it's a, it's a two day intensive from like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I tell people to bring their top three things that they've been putting off, whether it be mm. in relationships, making the phone call, spending time with Huge. their kids. For some people, it could be yeah. finance. Yeah, some people, it's health. Yeah. Right? Yeah, whatever we put off, I mean, you pay yeah. now or you pay later, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, so. <laughs> The um, so I told them to bring the top three things that they've been putting off that's costing them the most. Like this. And, and, and then what we do is I'm going to introduce them to the concepts and some of the tools that they can use to break through those things. And we're going to start implementing right away. Then what we do is there's a 90 day support. So they're going to get two, um, uh, two videos a week that support what we went over in class. You're gonna get two calls a week from my team, that, um, for, uh, I guess what's your accountability and support calls to make certain that they're implementing and following through. And they're gonna get me once one hour a week via webinar where they can call in. I'm gonna be coaching and answering questions for one hour once a week for the 12 weeks. So they're not only getting the, 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 the two day, they're getting the 90 days of support where, and um, I have a Facebook page that supports as well. And then there's a graduation night at the end of the 90 days. So there is a start and a finish. And so it's the greatest transformations. We're gonna have some special prizes for them. So like this. Uh, and so well, and it's all done in the concept of support, support. and positivity, I, I, and you can do this. And of course, you know, by on that one, it's uh, it's wonderful to see that you're you're actually checking in on what they're doing and how they're proceeding and offering them that support. That's wonderful. Well, you know, one thing that really I mean, hit me hard is when one of my mentors had told me that. 80% of the people who go to a seminar don't even open the kits that they get when they take them home. They actually sit collecting dust at home. Yeah. I'm I sure guess. they will one day, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, after they come when to my children. seminar, after they come to my children. seminar, they're going to open them all up. <laughs> so like this, so they don't <laughs> so, have a choice now. <laughs> so, so um, uh, well, but see, here's the thing. Um, well, why didn't they open it? Well, Tony Robbins talks about it. Pain and pleasure are two motivating factors. We'll do everything we can do to escape pain. We'll do everything we can do to gain pleasure. Yes. You know, and, and so the um, so what we need to do is reassociate what we uh, well re uh, create a new picture around what it is that we want and mm -hmm. even though there may be fear the desire for the thing that you want has to be greater than the fear or greater than the pain mm -hmm. you know what I mean? or else you're not going to do it which is that simple and even if you start it, it'll be it'll start stop start start it'll never be a consistent and so the goal is to give people to create the environment where it's extremely difficult for people to fail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I did. So Noel, well, you mentioned uh, Tony Robbins there. Now, didn't he have an approach to procrastination? Didn't he say, just put it off, put off the procrastination until later? Yes. Is that, is that, I'm taking it, that may not quite be good enough. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing. Um, the concept that we're talking about is great, and I agree. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Exactly. I no. I'll say it. Exactly. No. <laughs> um, uh, but people need support, and look, I love Tony Robbins. The very first book I read was it, it, it was it was, um, it was the Waking the Giant Within. You know what I mean? Mm. The problem with a lot of the seminars is that eighty percent of the people who show up are not going to implement. Twenty percent may. You know what I mean? Actually implement long term. I guess. Um, and so people come and they get fired up, but there is a. But then when you leave that environment, it's gone. It's back. It, well, yeah. it's, it, well, you're back to home. So you hear people cussing in the background. You hear this, and you're dealing with yeah. life. What's up? Life, life, like life shows up, right? And I guess. And so. And then now, when life shows up against the old you and the new you, will come. Okay, it's. It, it, it's a fight. It's you know what I mean? It, it, it's a challenge. So, and this is why we're creating a system. And it's not just a. It's not an event. It's a process. Process, you know, and ongoing. Absolutely, like, yeah. I guess absolutely because once people start getting into it, then it becomes. I guess it's, it's almost like you know you get a base hit. I'm not telling people to come and looking to hit home runs when they first come into the seminar. I'm looking for base hits because you need to rebuild credit with yourself. Yeah. A lot of times we believe, don't even believe ourselves when yeah. it comes to saying we're going to do X or we're going to do Y. And, and how many times have you told yourself that? You know. Well, if you have a friend that you've talked to and, it, and every time they say, Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'm going to do this. Yeah. After a while, you're like, Okay, they're never going to do it. Yeah. So I guess, and yeah. so, and it's the same thing with us, you know. Internally, you're literally every time that you say you're gonna do something and you don't, you're sending a message to your subconscious that you are not going to do X. And then what happens is that you begin to sabotage on multiple different levels. Yeah. And and, and, and won't move. Right. Um, you probably heard it already. You choose your thoughts. Your thoughts cause your feelings, and your feelings are expressed through your body in terms of your actions, yeah. and your actions um, produce your results. Well. 
the feeling space of the body of the mind is part of me is the subconscious it's the feel that's the feeling portion mm. like um, so for example um, if I was to ask you if you've, have you ever been to a movie and been emotionally moved before definitely okay. yes oh, well, yes I've walked out well, well no well here's the thing <laughs> but we all know that the movie's not real right yes. we, we, we know consciously yes. that it's lights camera action rendering it's not real even reality TV ain't real I mean mm. of course this interview's real congratulations <laughs> 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 on that one yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so um, but what happens is that like as I'm talking to you right now if you were hooked up to a brain graph Right now, your brain waves are going like this as I'm talking to you. When you've been watching television beyond a few minutes, what begins to happen is your brain waves start to go like this. Yeah, zone out. You're, you're in what's called a hypnotic state. Well, when the conscious mind shuts down, the emotional mind, it comes to the subconscious mind, opens up and is receptive to suggestion. Mm. And, I guess, I guess, and so, because the emotional mind is the feeling mind, and as you feel, you do, mm. that's why big companies will pay big money for 30 seconds of your time uh, I guess on commercials or for space through space repetition yeah. be, uh, uh, um, because of, um, because you are open and receptive like this to being programmed that's what I call it TV programs because you're being programmed the question is are you getting the right programming and if you're watching his program you're, being, you're getting the right programming <laughs> Thank like you. this I was, wondering, I was just wondering what is your greatest success story as far as who you've been able or what would you consider to be your best success story wow I, I would say one of them quite frankly is me uh, um, like this, I really um, thank God for making the decision to actually go after my passion and stop chasing the money. Um, they, 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 it's amazing how fast the money starts to come when you begin to actually do what you're meant to do. Well, you, you love what you, you do, and that's do, very right? indicative. 100%. And so. so that is, because um, I, I have been putting it off for years. So this, uh, this is like my seminar about procrastination. I'm living proof, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something where once you actually start moving, things really great things start to happen. Among my um, my students, Brandon Sinclair, I'm really proud of him. He's, he's a 23-year-old guy, actually, he was with with uh, 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 Desjardins Financial. And when I first started with him, uh, he had to actually borrow the money to actually sign up for the program. And he didn't have it initially. And he was a, and he was a young guy thinking, well, I'm too young to be an advisor. You know, like, uh, I hope, am I going to talk to people with real big money? Yeah. Are they going to listen to me? Are they big respect, walls up. You know, like, yeah. right. And then so, and I asked him the question, one question began to change everything. I said, is it your? I said, did they tell you they don't do business with you because you're younger, or is that, or is, it, or is that your thought process? Yeah. You know, I mean, it has nothing to do with them. If they've agreed to sit down and talk to you, it's because they're interested in what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't sit down here. You are. Yeah. I, guess, I said, did you do your homework? Is what you're is what is what you're bringing the best possible product available to them on the market to you at the best of your knowledge? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I said, have you have you vetted it through your mentors? You know what I mean? They just also to get their feedback on it because you're not because you're not alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got people. You got backup. Yeah. Right. And he says, hmm. So things began to shift for him, and then he became the top person actually in their office in London, Ontario. Wow. And I guess and that was inside of 90 days. That's uh, uh, and so and he's you know and he's right now he's doing he's doing a six-figure income for himself and. He's going to be a seven-figure soon. Mm -hmm. So it's something where so that was a, a, a huge success story in a very short period of time. Another guy, Charles A. Adeli, mm -hmm. he is a mortgage agent. He just started out. He'd been in the business for nine months, and he'd only done about three signups in in that nine months. And by the time I was finished working with him inside of 90 days, he's um, well. He has biggest month he just had in August this past. He did over 20 grand. I don't want to get into all of his business, but uh, he, he's done. Bottom line, he's doing three to four deals a month as an average, where he'd only done three deals in nine months. And so he's 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 doing extremely well. So I've got and there's more. So for people that are tuning in right now, checking this out, yeah. and they're thinking like, how are they going to recognize themselves? Uh, that they're gonna that they maybe should take sign up or get in touch with you sign up for the procrastination course or maybe follow up on some of the other services what ideas would you get them to ask themselves in order to decide and whether maybe or not they, they have to maybe or they have to avoid procrastinating <laughs> 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 well here, here's the deal the question is well, how different would your life look right now if you if you'd actually follow through on everything that you knew in your heart you should have been doing I said how, how, how different would life look well um, well I think you've got then you've got your answer you know what I mean it, it, it's t and when's the best time to stop procrastinating today or tomorrow <laughs> today so let's go uh, get registered 
come on out. Um, Noel at mydreamswork.com. You know what I mean? Uh, and he said, shoot me an email. Sorry, all of my dreams work. Dot com? No, uh, the, yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Now they will. Noel no. at mydreamswork. Oh, that's the email address. Com, yes. Noel at, at mydreamswork.com. Dot com. Or, the, or the website is mydreamswork.com. Mydreams yeah. Okay, great. And so the, but really and truly, if you haven't, if, you, if you've been putting it off, what's going to be different in January? What's going to be different in February? What's going to be different? It's just going to be another date, uh, I guess. So, and I say this when I'm at the front of the room all the time. Okay, well, you know, I'm not really sure. There's never going to be a perfect time. No. And there's never a perfect time for anything. No, this might be the perfect time. Create the be time. Because the Mayan calendar is ending. 2013, we're at the end of the year. <laughs> okay. Right? No more shoulda, coulda, woulda, but didn't. Exactly. Do. Just look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, no. well, listen, this has been great. Oh, you got the book too. When's the book going to be out? Oh, it's coming out January. It's yeah. called There Is No Tomorrow, The Ultimate Guide to Beating Procrastination. Wonderful. Yes. So can people sign up to get a copy? in advance? Uh, uh, absolutely. Sh 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 um, shoot me an email like this and absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 and by the way, just to make, to make certain that there's no excuses, we're going to have the, the hard copy version, the downloadable version, and the audio version, which you can get up. Brilliant. ITunes. So you're not going to have any excuse and no excuses. We're eliminating all excuses here. Oh, like this. Let's go. Play it in the car. <laughs> right. Well, listen, thanks for doing this today. Well, thanks and, for having uh, me. Good luck with the uh, seminars and uh, good to see you. Absolutely. Maybe we're going to make again. this an annual thing so you can see where it is inside yeah. the year. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. By all means. It is yeah, a real pleasure. And, you as well. And, and congratulations to you on your success with the, with the social Thank media side. Pay it forward. Go after it and make yeah. it hard. Well, you're doing great work. And I guess and the more people that know about it, it, um, it it's, well, I, I see big things for you. So that's awesome. Keep it up. Information should be free. So. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So awesome. thanks, Noel. Yeah. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. Come back uh, with our next guest in a couple of minutes here from the uh, restaurant. Uh, with PBN here PBN? on the top of the yeah. uh, Harbor By Castle. All means. Right <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're back here on the show, and uh, we're here with Tom Vassos, and Tom is a university professor, and you wrote this book, mm -hmm. right, which is uh, Destination Innovation, Tom, and a great to have you here on the show, and, uh, and let's talk about this, because it's creating mobile uh, marketing and commerce strategies, and I know... It's I'm creating hype. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> I'm, uh, and she was making fun of me, because I don't have a QR code yet, or, wow. or anything like that, but it, and it just seems there's so much always new technology it's hard to keep up with it yeah. and I don't even know how you did that to, to write this book but it, uh, it's amazing because the world's changing so quickly with everyone getting on board with it five billion phones in the world six billion accounts uh, by 2014 there's going to be more people mobile connected to the internet than, than the more traditional methods saw an interesting stat from the United Nations in India more people have access to phones than toilets yeah. <laughs> so mm. I mean it's amazing how pervasive the technology is becoming. Uh, 25 years ago, uh, half the world's population didn't even make a single phone call, and now 86% of the planet has access to this technology. So that's really, it's really changing the world. Yeah. Globalizing the market. 
Well, now. it's more than a phone now, too. I mean, with the, the, the computing power that's always increasing, like these phones are going to be able to, well, we we're already seeing it, right? With, with tablets and that sort of iPhones, that's much more than a phone. What, Absolutely. What do you see the future uh, progressing to, let's say, give it a, a five-year uh, you know, outlook as far as the, uh, the mobile phone uh, sure. industry? Well, if you think about it, as you said, it started just as this communication device, let's talk to other people. But secondly, now it's becoming this social portal. It's the portal into my entire social network mm -hmm. of talking to my friends on Facebook or Twitter or them knowing my location that I just yeah. uh, located at a certain restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's becoming part of it. Then there's just the information part of it. I mean, the world's information is now at our fingertips, so we can solve any problem or solve any argument or have uh, any piece of information from weather to sports to the latest piece it's of news. less censored. Exactly. <laughs> but the big piece that's coming now is the whole commerce and transaction side because that's the informational side, but now conducting transaction and, and buying things and, and ordering things and picking them up at a store. And, and, and so it's integrating into the fabric of commerce, which then all of a sudden it's of interest to companies and retailers. Make and Exactly. So now we're looking at how we can use it to make money. So let's, let's kind of explore that a little bit for, for people that are watching that are in business, maybe they're self-employed or they're running a small business or even a large business. What are some of the things that uh, you can do with mobile commerce that, that maybe they're not even aware sure. of that they can do? Oh, just amazing things. I mean, one of the things that retailers fret about is something called showrooming, is people walking into a retail score, store, scanning the barcode, and instantly getting a hundred other prices either from nearby stores or off of Amazon.com and this is a tough thing for retailers to That's to what manage. I'm thinking as a business owner that's giving me a headache already. It, absolutely so now those business owners have to figure out how are they going to engage in that conversation yeah. and provide value and provide an instant coupon when you walk through their door uh, or a QR code that scans something which is a video a preemptive because customers are already doing this. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's scary that all of a sudden I have that instant access to this hundred other prices. I mean, that does a lot for, for the price knowledge in the marketplace mm -hmm. and therefore putting a lot of downward pricing pressures on retailers and companies. And potentially uh, having a negative impact on the little guy, I'll right? See. See. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So a lot of people are just learning these things about moving through the sales cycle to be better informed, looking up product reviews and better information about, gee, is that, really, is that product really any good? Because they're more likely to trust someone else rather than the brand owner. And so now there's this whole environment of, of communications and discussions on social media that people are getting engaged in to make, make much better informed decisions. So let's, maybe there's, I'm hoping you could find another example, because that example is scaring the living daylights out of small business sure. people, right? But is there, you know, can you give an example of a way that a small business can use this technology to get a, a competitive advantage on the big guy, for Absolutely. Example? So you can now transform the customer service journey with your customers to propel yourself above those competitors because this isn't just about commerce this is about customer service levels so imagine an example of someone like Krispy Kreme that you can sign up for this service that as soon as those fresh donuts come off the line and the bell rings on the equipment to tell people in the store to come and, and grab the next tray imagine anyone within a 15 block radius getting that same notice on their smartphone, which is an actual app, to say, oh, guess what? We got the fresh batch right off, off, off the tray, and, and, and all of a sudden, people flocking into sales. Because you do need to have them fresh. Exactly. I, I've never had the opportunity yet to have those Krispy Kreme donuts <laughs> oh. fresh, but I'm looking forward to it one day. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> but that's just one customer service example, because mm. it's the power of the smartphone. So it's not just that it's connected, but there's a whole bunch of what we call mobile sensors in this thing that are sensing my GPS location in the world. They're, they're sensing the speed of this phone and, and where it's moving from where to where and how quickly. And you can infer a lot of information exactly. just from that. Exactly. history as far as what you exactly. like, your Google searches, everything. It's basically picking all of that up exactly. and now it's firing off to you uh, yeah, where right. Krispy Kreme is. Yeah, <laughs> so if you think about all of those sensory inputs, I mean, it's introducing entirely new business model and levels of customer service. Give you a simple example. So you've rented a phone from Enterprise Car Rental and guess what? Now, when your flight arrives into Toronto, along with you and your phone, 
hey, welcome to Toronto. We've already checked you in. You've just bypassed the lineup. Your car is in spot 420 and have a great day. Now, all of a sudden that raises the level of customer service that says, wow, that's, that's the kind of company I want to do business with. So everything from that to ordering my submarine sandwich before I go in and eliminating that lineup and paying for it and now I'm picking up the submarine sandwich rather than the six minute lineup to have it made, the two minute lineup to get it, to, to pay for it, now I can do it all, all on the smartphone. Okay, so now you're a university professor and you teach in the business uh, context and I know you just came back from China uh, where I guess you were, were you teaching, teaching over there yes, as well? Yes. And so let's talk about Canada in terms of mobile uh, marketing. Uh, relative to some of the other places in the world because uh, sure. you know we were just uh, you know like the QR codes I heard they were much bigger in yes. the Far East before they were and there's still I guess a bit of a lag here in Canada sure. about people using them sure so so Europe for example is quite further ahead than many other regions in the world so they've been doing a lot on smartphones co commerce transactions etc Japan's very far ahead for those that don't know what a QR code it's a quick response code and it happens to be this little symbol that looks like uh, yeah, that. Yeah, we can, uh, you can demonstrate. Sure, exactly. So what happens is, is a QR code can do just about anything you want to do on a smartphone. So you simply load your QR code software, your app. Then you simply scan the QR code that you want to get some information from. And then you simply initiate whatever it was that that QR code is doing. And in this case, it happens to be a video of the book author saying, oh, hey, thanks for picking up my book. And uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the book and, and why you might want to take a look at it and read it and things like that. And so that's just one example. So that's a, you know, a just, just to, what that means to me is, is that little symbol that's uh, here, uh, no bigger than an inch square, can lead to any kind of online video it's or any kind of, it could lead link. to hundreds of pages of online content Absolutely. if you want. So it's a, a, yes, a it great can, way to deliver it information. It can transfer my business card information to you. It could mm -hmm. automatically generate a tweet onto Twitter. It can automatically do various things like that. Watch, like you said, watch a video on YouTube. And it's, it's transforming the way we interact with companies. And so in the example of the book, there's actually 125 of them in the book because instead of me trying to explain something in four oh, yeah. pages, let me just show you this one minute video on in augmented other words, reality. In other words, there's a lot of value here, right, Tom? Like the <laughs> exactly. book's this thick, but it's, there's videos, exactly. hundreds of pages of content. Exactly, go, go so be, because imagine me explaining augmented reality in four pages worth versus, hey, just watch this one minute video and it comes to life. Wow much better than what I could explain. I'll give you another that example. That sounds like a good topic I right there. Augmented reality. Augmented reality. Exactly. Beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> but before we get off the QR code example, in, yeah. in, in Tokyo there's a building called the N Building. They have an entire QR code on the side of the entire building. Mm. So as you walk by you scan it yeah. and you see which vendors are inside the building to determine, oh should I go in? Is it a shoe it's store? A Is it a plan. clothing? Wow. Whatever. And you even see the tweets from inside the building, oh, 10% off shoes today, you really should come in, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so it's this interaction, it's this social media, it's this power of the information that we can get. It's okay, amazing. so that, you know, that, that's telling me that they're still way ahead of us over there in terms <laughs> yeah, of QR the, the, codes. They, they are in, in that area. Yeah, can I ask you just for, I don't know if you have the, the stat in your head, but you know, I, I'm just curious, say what the percentage of the population in Japan that is able to scan and use QR codes versus the percentage in Canada because I know I'm not one of those people yes. currently uh, anyway. As a general rule of thumb yeah. both in Europe and advanced countries uh, like Japan I would say it's roughly triple what it is here. Yeah, okay. But we've got a pretty fast growth rate on some of this stuff too. Well also it, that tells me there's an opportunity here for the businesses that are seeing this right now that they can get in and, and Get a, get a leg up on Even for plane tickets, even for theater tickets, it's all being used right now. We just haven't been able to take it that much you know, further. Absolutely. So, so it's not just about link to video, but once again, mm -hmm. Air Canada getting their ticket, you getting a checking QR code, in. checking in now, and so it's speeding up the check-in process and, uh, and, and things like using that. using it just to you know, make contact, you know, oh, you want my information right now instead of a business card. It's exactly the same thing. Absolutely. So now, um, so you like augmented <laughs> reality? I like augmented reality. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> augmented reality is like, uh, 
literally an entire new world. So once again, we know the position of the phone by GPS. There's a compass built in, so we know which way it's pointing. The software can recognize things. And so I'll give an example of an augmented reality application is a real estate app so that I, as a realtor, I'm standing on the corner, Young and Bloor. I hold my phone up. I start going around like this. And all of a sudden on the phone, oh, house for sale, apartment for rent. Oh, let me look at that one. I want to see. Okay, click on that. All of a sudden, oh, it's three bedrooms. It's $2,500 a month. Will it, it even do a panoramic It'll do a panoramic yes. virtual 3D tour. Yes. So now it's a full augmented reality experience, augmenting what's in the real world. Yeah. You know what? Okay, is it coming? It sounds like you, you can see into the future, uh, Tom. <laughs> Are we going to have glasses that we can wear and then... We just live in augmented reality all the time. Chapter 14. Don't talk about <laughs> Chapter 14. <laughs> yes, Google already has a, a project uh, called Google Glass that is literally a pair of glasses which, with a small display screen that you can actually, as you're moving through the real world, yeah. bring up information, see a review of that restaurant you're just walking by, show you that your friend has just sent you a text message that you can read and then say, oh, call that friend and all of a sudden you're talking to the friend. So it's kind of tied to the aug augmented reality concept. So there's not only uh, glasses like that, there's even watches that uh, are like your Dick Tracy watch. and. Or maybe, you know where I see this going, Tom? Oh, no. Ultimately, it'll be just like that Star Trek episode with the <laughs> brains. You know, in the you know 700 quat loos that the newcomers will have to be destroyed. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's is, where we're headed. Is that where we're going? Uh, Watch really? Tom, at least one of Tom Cruise's movie and you'll kind of know the direction we're going. Okay. Uh, Can I be Miranda's real thrall? Oh, please. <laughs> we'll just change that. <laughs> it's a lot you can do as far as that goes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so virtually. Uh, now, um, so this book, really, for, for people that are watching, who's it really... Like who would really benefit from reading this book? The prime audience is people that are in business that want to understand how to capitalize on this whole new environment. So it really takes people through this four-step process to say, look, first understand your business and client needs. What do the clients want? Because every business is different. And, so that's and just a good basic business. Exactly. Let's look at what our customers need and let's look at some examples of how this can reduce your lineups or or, or impact showrooming and, and overcome that lit restriction. So that's step one. It's written in people's English, though. Absolutely, so absolutely. You don't need to absolutely. be a techie duty person or no, anything like exactly. that. Exactly. So it's let's look at what the business needs are. I give you some examples, but every business is different, so you decide what, what direction to take. Secondly, let's look at the technology now, because each of these technologies, GPS, RFID, wireless, accelerometer, might open up a whole new business opportunity. So I, I, I show them the technology. Third is to get people to consider, can, are you going to just tweak your marketing a little bit? Is this a campaign? Is this improving your customer service? Or is this an entirely new business model? I'll give you a simple example there. Uh, Tesco, a home plus grocery chain in uh, Korea, trying to figure out how to surpass the number one grocery chain. While well, they created stores in subway stations, but it wasn't real products, it was just backlit posters yeah. of the products. I've heard about you this one. Exactly. And as yeah. you're waiting for the subway, you scan the QR code, the, the, milk, the milk, the bread, and the eggs. Yeah. You complete the transaction. And when you get home that night, guess what? Your groceries are delivered. Yeah, that's so, amazing. It's a beautiful that is a an, whole new... It's an entirely new business model. So I, I get people to consider the range just from a campaign to customer service, to improving your operations, like your employees using this stuff, right through to business model transformation. Wow. And then the final le level, the fourth level, is how, what are the actual tactics to do branding, marketing, commerce, and support? And so I've, I've got these neat top 10 lists of the top 10 lists of how to do branding, the top 10 lists of how to do commerce, the top 10 list of how to support your customers better. Uh, on the support side. So imagine uh, getting your IKEA shelving unit and scanning something that instantly shows you a 20 minute video of someone actually putting it together. Which is way better than <laughs> in reading English. <laughs> in, in English, exactly. <laughs> and, and so it's improving the customer service. It's, it's doing the commerce transaction. So everything from a traditional credit card transaction to a lot of people are leery about credit card transactions both online and on phones, but hey, what if I could just charge my phone bill no credit card, 
And then next time I get my Rogers or Bell bill, oh, and, and you spent that extra $10 on that item. So, so, so that, uh, so it, it's commerce. It, it's a uh, Square, a company called Square has a payment processing system, a little square device you plug into the top of the phone. It becomes a total credit card transaction processing system. And it's completely secure. Secure, and people can do the transaction. I scan the, the credit card and then I hand it to you and say, okay, just sign right on the screen there. And by the way, let me know if you want your electronic receipt to your text or to your email, fully paperless, wow. right? And that's in the book? It's in the book too. So, wow. I just have one last question. Yes. As far as um, measurable ROI, uh, and this is what most you know, businesses want to know. They want to know if I'm going to invest the money in the technology and everything like that. Absolutely. How, how do I gain and how do I know Absolutely. what my so, ROI is? So throughout is the be? book, it talks about ROI, talks about Good. analytics, Good. because you can measure so many things from this. Okay the click-through rate, yeah. the number of likes you had to, to get social media engagement, the number of transactions that got initiated as a result yes. of it, the number of check-ins to see how many times they visited your store. So there's just this myriad of things you can measure that, that for a well, marketing that's, person, that's it's, wow, that's... I, could, I could do that. Now I can measure it right down to which QR code in which magazine ad in which publication generated the sales and you can do it right down to that level by campaign by brand by channel so it's some pretty amazing statistics well, that's wow. just beautiful yeah, as far as the investor goes because that's the hardest thing that is generally an objective that they need uh, you know well I'll tell you I, I'm I'm totally sold on this book and I think it uh, it you know for anybody that's in business you know that's thinking about the future or even just surviving the present and, and I mean, it sounds like an absolute must. Thank you. Especially in Canada. Thank you. I'm intrigued. So, Good Tom. luck to Canadian businesses that are going to use this kind of information to propel themselves into this whole new paradigm <laughs> and there's of whole new mobile, businesses. right? There's, yeah, and there's whole new businesses that, that people will come up, up yeah. with as a result. Now, how can people get their hands on the book? Is there a website? Amazon.com mm -hmm. and uh, also DestinationInnovation.com is probably a great uh, place so to go Even well. the title of the book.com. Exactly. And you can order. Okay, Tom, Well, that's thank you great. for bringing this technology to Canada yes. and to uh, yeah, yeah. enable us here in Canada to yes. take a look. And, and also, that. if they wanted to just get some free content out of the book, uh, my blog at tombassos.wordpress.org. Uh, has a bunch of information that's just freely available that people can access as well. Wonderful. Okay. And we'll Fantastic. put that up on the credits at the end. Yes, we will. Okay, Tom, this <laughs> is Thank great. You. Thanks for uh, thanks writing for the book and thanks for coming in today. It was very much a pleasure, today. sir. It was really great chatting with you. Mm. Okay, so we're going to take another quick break and we're going to come back to the next guest as Liquid Lunch continues. At PVM? Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back to the show. It's uh, me, Hugh, and Miranda. Yes, We're having a fabulous yeah. show here, aren't we? It's been a great night so far. It's so been far. absolutely amazing. In fact, where's your booze? Oh, I've been even... hiding it down <laughs> here. Shh, don't tell anyone. Am okay. I allowed to uh, have, a, have a sip? Yes, <laughs> of course. It's just grape juice. Yes, grape juice. On okay. camera. <laughs> Okay, but we're, uh, I, I, I'm really thrilled that we've got uh, Ralph Idema joining us here. And Ralph, I am, uh, you know, I was there when that first announcement came out and you just said 1974. Yeah. Where the Turks and Caicos Islands wanted to join Canada as our 11th province. And I thought that was just a great idea yes. at the time. And you were one of the original yes. seven guys that, was, that made that happen. Yeah, or that's right. Can we say founding happened? father? A founding father. <laughs> I, I'm of the age of being a father. So in fact, I'm a yeah. grandfather. <laughs> so uh, yes, uh, we were there in 74. And it was the prime minister locally and the development minister, Leah McGuire, who uh, had this idea of uh, having a bigger brother with the same kind of uh, uh, ministerial government, democratic, parlamentary. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, we fit well. We fit better than the Americans. Right. In fact, they thought that the Americans were kind of harsh business wise and Canadians were nice and soft. Exactly. So, and we were. Yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, they wanted to do that to improve their economy. They were really at the back end of the Caribbean and the back tail end of the Bahamas. And they had no economy, their salt industry just having failed. You know, I think I didn't even hear about them until that announcement came out. Yeah. I was not even aware of Turks and Caicos at the time, so that was... Can we just give a little bit of an overview so that when people are kind of, you know, taking a listen, they understand yeah. more or less what we're talking about, and okay. if that's all right. Well, the, uh, uh, yeah, Ralph, do you want to sure. do that? Yeah, the Turks and Caicos uh, proposed a sovereignty association with... Pardon? Okay, good. A sovereignty association with Canada. We can't have sovereignty association, <laughs> though, Ralph. Well, not l'association la, souveraine. Uh, I don't mean I don't mean à la française. I, I uh, my wife is Quebecoise, and uh, I speak the language quite well, and I understand how they think. Yeah. But this is different. This is bringing the Canadian dollar down there mm -hmm. to avoid the two billion dollar a year leakage to the economy of the Canadian dollar going south. Right. So it helps us, yeah. but it also helps their economy. Yeah. And just to be very short, there were five different times over a 30-year period that they made this proposal to join Canada just with the aim of marketing. Yeah. And they ended up getting developed to the point where they got 2,000 villas, all kinds of hotels and other businesses, and they ended up going from the back end of the Caribbean to the front end. And now they're very expensive to live in. But they did now, so they didn't really ever want to join us. That was just a marketing ploy. To use us? Um, there were people who were very serious about it. Yeah. But mostly it was a marketing ploy, and our own government was never serious in Canada. I can't believe our government wasn't serious. That would have been. Well, perfect. I actually had a Big Mac <laughs> uh, with uh, the cabinet minister, and he said, um, when I told uh, Mitchell Sharp, a uh, two billion dollar loss to our a tourist economy by way of money going out, he said, well, it's just a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not worth the trouble. Oh, yeah, a billion dollars doesn't mean anything to the federal government. No. <laughs> so that was the attitude. But it sure made a big difference to the Turks and Caicos. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we certainly improved their economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got in at the ground floor, and my claim to fame with seven partners is that we built the country's largest resort village, Sapadilla Village. It took us 25 years from 1980 to 2005, 100% built out. That's a real feather in our cap. So we have that experience. Okay, so you're, and you're a developer, Yes. right? So uh, in 1974, that was the ground floor if people wanted to get in in Turks and Caicos and take advantage of a, a new opportunity, that That's was the right. time. But now I understand you're, you're doing, you're kind of repeating the process with a different uh, set of islands in the Caribbean. Yes, and that is St. Kitts Nevis. Okay. Um, again, uh, we talked about the ground floor problem in the Turks where they lost their salt industry mm -hmm. and they had to go to tourism. Well, St. Kitts just lost its sugar industry. How come? Because uh, uh, they had huge tracts of land, but over the last 400 years, they mined the soil. They took the nutrients out to the point where oh. it could no longer grow properly. Right. They were not practicing proper crop rotation. Conversion. Yeah. yeah. So their sugar industry plus their rum industry mm -hmm. uh, was lost. 
and it hurt them economically. Yeah. And now they have developed the uh, uh, investment to a passport program, whereby uh, if you invest 500,000, you get a passport because you're improving the economy. Mm -hmm. By investing, we're talking investing in property or in investing in the economy in any way? I investing in the economy in any way, but most often it's by way of condominiums. Okay. And uh, we are doing a large agricultural project, which would count, but uh, uh, first we're starting by developing our presence with condominiums. And okay, so do you have your passport yet? Your St. Kitts and Nevis No, no, passport? my uh, partner just went down uh, three weeks ago and he's going down again uh, next week, lucky guy. Okay. And uh, his name is Ashraf and he already has a natural suntan. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to get one, maybe I'll go down in January. <laughs> Well, okay, so then is this an opportunity for Canadians to think about investing in St. Kitts and Nevis and getting a, a tropical passport? Yes, uh, and most definitely for Canadians, but for a lot of other nationalities too. But for Canadians, if I compare it to the uh, condominium boom here in Toronto, mm -hmm. and I'm very much involved because we are building seniors' independent living condominiums. Mm -hmm. We have site, five sites approved for construction and one already finished at Niagara Falls. So I do understand the Toronto condominium industry. And uh, this particular uh, magazine, this month's issue, November, mm -hmm. of Toronto Life, Toronto yeah. Life, yeah. Um, specializes the new elite, mm -hmm. the immigrant. And these are the people that are coming to Toronto. Yes. And we know it's already happening. Like what the, sh I, I, what comes to mind for me is the Shangri-La yes. condominium. Mm -hmm. They're all pre-sold up right? the wazoo. Mm -hmm. with and yes. they're, like, they're like starting at a million or two million or something like yeah. that. Uh -huh. Those are obviously not Torontonians. <laughs> no. Not too many of them. These are, these are the, the global elite that yes. want a place in Toronto, right? Well, this particular article in Toronto Life points out that uh, there are 25,000 people on the waiting list and they have already paid 800,000 each. Mm -hmm. uh, my math that goes to about 20 billion that some bank is holding. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they're not going to get processed right away. Now, no, is this on the waiting list, just, just for one minute here, uh, on the waiting list to get into the country, yeah, to Canada? Yes, and what this article points out is that these 25,000 people could make a big contribution to the condominium boom. And that would be their way into Canada. Is yeah, that well, basically what you're referencing? No, they, they invest or? with the government. Okay, so you're saying that could be their contribution to the condominium boom in Toronto or in St. No, Kitts? Uh, what I'm saying is um, they are not getting into Toronto yeah. because 25,000 of them are on a waiting, waiting list. list. Okay. And uh, because there's such a waiting list, yeah. uh, the government is clamped down. And in April, it will go from 800,000 that you must place with the government for five years. Mm -hmm to 1.6 million that you will place with the government for five years. And uh, then you will get a thank you letter for having helped the economy and no money, you'll get your money back with no interest, mm -hmm. no profit. So, you, you, have lit entry. so you, you have gained entry, you have taken advantage of our wonderful social services, you get to drive a taxi, not that the people at this level would be doing that. So we're talking about a totally different level of people who do not have to be in that waiting list mm -hmm. because they can simply get their St. Kitts passport, mm -hmm. uh, come in here after three months, and oh, stay for six months. So it's a way. It's a it's way for them to gain entry into Canada. Into Canada. Yes. I'm not sure why you'd want to come to Canada though if you've got a place in St. Kitts. Yeah. Kitts. True. Um. And that's where we started this conversation about condominium investing yeah. in St. Kitts. The uh, advantage there is. What are our municipal taxes here? Horrendous, aren't they? And uh, what are income taxes? Horrendous. Well, St. Kitts, and again, the Turks and Caicos comparison, mm -hmm. they have no municipal taxes. Mm -hmm. None of these island countries do. So isn't that a big saving of maybe 25% right there? Yeah. And they have no income taxes. Okay. So about your only cost is 7% administration fee. Okay, so this is sounding really good now. So let's just get down to specifics. Uh, yeah. Like for Canadians, people watching this show right now, like can they, what does it take to get into a condo? Getting a passport. In, in yeah. St. Kitts to and Nevis. Uh, we, we have a, a basic procedure where the government down there, of course, does do very serious due diligence on you because their passport is uh, one of the highest quality in the world. Mm -hmm. So not everyone can just get in. Right. But the basic requirement is 500,000 investment in a 
small condominium. And that can be rented out at a thousand a week. And uh, with only 50% occupancy, mm -hmm. you could be earning 2,000 a month or 26,000 a year. Okay, I saw that in the, on the website today. Yes. But is that realistic? 50% well, occupancy? Um, I would say um, more normally, uh, there, 75% is. My partner uh, paid $450 a day in off season in October in the Marriott because it was so crowded. Okay. So if the Marriott is charging 450 a day because mm -hmm. you had to wait to the last minute, mm -hmm. normally it's 300 a day. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot. So I can again compare it to the Turks and Caicos. I built a product there, mm -hmm. small cottages. Mm -hmm. The same size is currently renting online mm -hmm. at 1,200 a week. Wow. Okay. So there I'm saying 1,000 a week because the Turks and Caicos that way is a bit more expensive. Right. And I'm saying 50% occupancy, whereas the Turks is getting 75% occupancy. Mm -hmm. And uh, St. Kitts is pretty well getting 100% occupancy. Okay, so that sounds like really attractive. Like, what does it take for somebody to get a con Like, what is the cost of a condo down there? So the cost of a, a basic, say, 600-foot condo, uh, which you can rent at 1000 a, a, a week, is 500000 And that just happens to include your passport. Oh, perfect. So, yeah, so here the cost of the passport, here yes, the cost yes. of the Paris passport, currently the cost of the passport is 800000 and you do not get your condominium. You get a letter of thank you five years later five years for later. the government having used no your money. So let me ask you too, because I've heard good things about the tax benefits of uh, Nevis and St. Kitts. Yes. So if somebody gets a, a condo, for example, and, and uh, sets a business down there. Yes. Are there any tax advantages that they can... Absolutely. Uh, the, exactly the same tax advantages as the Turks and Caicos. Okay. And I know the company's ordinance, which mm -hmm. governs tax advantages mm -hmm. and governs how your corporation works. And yes, uh, there are uh, about 1% corporate taxes, 1.5 depending, and that's it. And there are no personal income taxes. It's Sounds about, a little bit better than Canada. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Um, as, as a layman here, just because yeah. this is all new to me, first yes. time. Um, well, you're so young. Oh, well, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, just wrapping my head around this, thinking uh, as far as all of the baby boomers that are, you know, in futurely mm -hmm. going to be retiring and, uh, you know, one wondering if they can enjoy the lamps of luxury in heaven, yeah. uh, St. Kitts, so forth and so on. Uh, you're basically, um, it, it comes down to about 500,000. 500, Yes. And there they will actually be able to be entitled to a condo. They will have all of the banking and privileges, rights, that type That's of thing. Right, and yes. also be, have their own passport. And they become a citizen, lifelong. Right. Exactly. So they become a true citizen. Mm -hmm. And the passport's renewable every 10 years. Wow, okay. Yeah. That sounds... Uh, and I consider it a very high quality passport because it's good without visa to 121 countries, and uh, which is better than Canada because one of the largest countries in the world, India, does not honor the Canadian passport. You have to take a visa, which can take seven weeks or more. And uh, in our case, um, we do not require visas of Indian passport holders, mm -hmm. and India does not require a visa of St. Kitts pass holder, passport holders. So in other words, uh, St. Kitts passport holders, be they Canadian, be they Australian, be they uh, Ugandan, uh, mm -hmm. they can uh, get free access to India on the basis of their St. Kitts passport, which has their address, you know, their condominium. Wow, okay. So now, are these condos, are they uh, like, uh, are they townhouse condos or are they more like apartment stock condos? Um, the ones we have right now are four and five, four story, three and four story, in blocks of say 15. Oh, so of 15 units in one building. Yes, that's and right. And you could be on the first, second, third, or fourth floor. That's right, yes. Okay. And they're already built. It's not as if you're waiting for them to, you that's, know. That's right. This particular project that we are joint ventured with, Ocean's Edge, they uh, have 360 units of which 160 are already built. Mm -hmm. And now we are taking orders. And because they're already started, mm -hmm. it will take six months to finish. Mm -hmm. Whereas we also have another project on Nevis, the other island, mm -hmm. where we will be starting in February and that will go from start to finish. We have an engineering company and with the roads, etc. You're looking at 24 months to completion. Okay, and, and this is, they speak English there? 
They right. speak English. And, and uh, oui, on parle français aussi. aussi. Uh, uh, le nom du capital, c'est Basse-Terre. The capital is Basse-Terre, which mm -hmm. is obviously uh, Lower Earth, whatever that means. <laughs> But, you know, it's an interesting name because I think this country, uh, as many, were back and forth between the English and the French. Right. So you have in the names both English and French influence. Okay. Very so interesting. Okay. And uh, just one more uh, very, very specific question. Like, what are the condo fees like? The condo fees are basically, um, basically 7% management covers it. In, in other words, the condo fees are no more than $100. Okay. So yeah, so that's they're very, way, very low. Way better than Toronto. <laughs> Now, yes. what about, are there issues around condo governance? in St. Kitts and Nevis like there are here in Ontario? No, because um, uh, we are, are the developer mm -hmm. with Ocean's Edge and we manage and we cover uh, the project and um, these uh, boards and, and, and fights you get in condo management here, mm -hmm. it's not the same thing. Okay. It's being managed by a professional management corporation okay. and the grass does get cut, etc. Yeah. They don't remove the snow though. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, What are you going to do? How about the rain? <laughs> uh, well, that goes downhill. Uh, actually, we, we like to keep it in cisterns, nice fresh rainwater. Yeah. And we do that in the Turks and Caicos too. Okay, great. And uh, what can you tell us about St. Kitts and Nevis as, in terms of a, a place to be, a place to live? Okay, it, it's very cosmopolitan. For example, we talked about the Indian uh, uh, clientele. Mm -hmm. um, there are on a population of 45,000 in, in St. Kitts, mostly downtown, mm -hmm. about 9,000 of them are in fact Indian, speaking both Urdu and Hindi. Okay. So, you know, they're very comfortable. And of course, French is also spoken. And uh, um, it's very cosmopolitan because it's European. Here again, the comparison with the Turks and Caicos, it is strictly Canadian and North American with a New York market as well. So you only really have the Canadian and American flights in, mm -hmm. whereas St. Kitts is truly European in nature, mm -hmm. and you've got BOAC, KLM, Lufthansa, Swissair, they're all coming in. And uh, the biggest new development on our island of, of Nevis is uh, Saudi is developing a $400 million yacht-based marina resort. Oh. Wow. Wow. That's going to be key to all the yachters and all the boaters. Yes. Oh my goodness. And even for the boaters who have, who like to go on cruises, we have six berths that will hold the largest cruise liners in the world. Beautiful. Six at a time. Huge. I have a picture that shows the huge cruise liner as being bigger than the downtown buildings. Wow. They would. Monstrous village. Well, you know yeah. what? Okay, I'm sold. Uh, You're sold. I'm sold, Ralph. I Now, I want to find out more, and I'm, I'm sure some of the people out there want to find out more, too. Mm -hmm. What's the best way for them to do that, get more information, or find out what the procedure is and how they yeah. move forward and that sort of thing? Well, the s simplest thing to remember is my name, Ralph Idema, Ralph dot Idema at gmail.com, R-A-L-P-H dot I-D-E-M-A at gmail.com. So okay. So just email you? Just email me. Uh, the name is easy to remember, Ralph Dot Idema, good old Dutch name. I can swim across to uh, St. Martin's there and be among my Dutch compatriots. He's also a martial artist still. Whoa, yeah. I, I wasn't here for that part of the conversation. <laughs> so there's no website or anything, Ralph? Um, there are websites available. Yeah. If you just Google St. Kitts, you'll find a lot. In other, it's very simple to Google St. Kitts. You know, Gmail and, and, and the, the Internet is so good these days. Once you're on to St. Kitts, you'll see everything. You'll see Ocean's Edge, which is there, uh, which is where we are. Okay. okay. And so, so the best St. Kitts and then Ocean Edge, and then they'll yeah. basically find you that way oh, as well? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So, okay. and there is one other thing, too, about our destination and about our clientele for the passports to paradise, mm -hmm. and that is danger zones. Um, uh, we have a great network, including for security and what we call asset management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's all about money and protecting your assets, okay. and even your life is a good asset. And uh, in the Middle East, uh, you've heard about Iran and Israel, but have you heard about our, uh, have you heard about uh, Pakistan and India, and and the Himalayas and the way they're fighting? And they have fields of tanks with tactical weapons. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if there is a flare-up, it's very nice for these rich Indian and Pakistani families to have some passports 
so they at least can get the women and children out quickly mm -hmm. and just go to one of your friendly countries because the passport is good for all the European Union countries. Mm -hmm. So there are plenty of Indians with relatives in Switzerland or mm -hmm. in Germany or in England. And not, you know, we don't have to be Canada-centric here. Mm -hmm. And they can simply get out for four months until things cool down. And uh, uh, the other thing is, for political and financial reasons, uh, a lot of people want double passports. In Moscow, we've got 500 potential uh, people under asset protection who do not want the former KGB to know where they've been. Mm -hmm. They'll scan their passport on the way in, but if you have the second passport in a safety box mm -hmm. in Atlanta, and that's your last passport stamp on your Russian passport, mm -hmm. from there on you're working on your St. Kitts passport, and they do not know where you've been. Wow. And you, for tax reasons? That's, you know, you're opening up all kinds of there's a wealth of information that is flooded over us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still thinking about the, the, the heaven passport as far as that goes. Yeah, the, the passport to paradise. Well, it is paradise. I just want to go lie on the beach. Yeah. And the other thing is, uh, for these people who are basically wanting to get out to maybe a, a friendly country in Europe or to Australia for temporary protection, and like the Egyptians really had to get out. A lot mm -hmm. of them came to Canada. A lot of them went to even Australia. And uh, if they have one of our passports, they can go to Australia, they can go to wherever they have relatives, and then when things cool down, and they are calming down, mm -hmm. uh, then they can go back to Egypt. And uh, so it's a temporary, they do not have to go to St. Kitts to get their passport. Right. So they can get it, but they will be researched. Okay. All right. Well, this has been great, okay. Ralph, to hear about this, and uh, gee. Still I wish I lived beach. in <laughs> Egypt so I could uh, have a real good reason yeah, to, so to get to, my passport. To go for four yeah. months. But anyway, thanks for coming in and telling us about you. this. And it's nice a real to privilege you. to yeah, meet, nice to meet one of the guys that was yeah. almost going to make Turks and Caicos a Canadian province. So this has been a thrill. Yeah. Well, so, we'll work on some kids. Okay, great. Continue All right, on. thanks uh, <laughs> Thanks for being here. We're going to take a quick break, come back with our last guest <laughs> as the launch continues. We'll be right back.
Uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, we're back on the show, but Miranda's mic just fell off. See, okay, Miranda, this is how we go. We see we surf the reality. It's called live. And I know we're live, so she's getting the mic ready. We got clip, Joey clip. C joining us here. And Joey, that, that's your camera over there. Just oh, there's the camera. You don't even okay. have to pay attention to the cameras. I don't. We're just going to have a little conversation yeah, we're, here. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Joey. I'm Miranda. Pleased to meet you, Miranda. <laughs> yes. Now, Joey, I was on your website today, and I saw there's a countdown in the corner yeah. to like the, your 50th anniversary in the entertainment business, that's right? right. That's so right. I'm 142 years old, I think now. Well, congratulations! Uh, you know, uh, like <laughs> but no, so 50 years that would let, put it back to what 1962 at this point. 1963, or January 9th, 4 4 p.m. And I saw that you did what was it? The Canadian, Canadian Bandstand Band 63. 63. What, what what was that? Well, awesome. let me tell you. I, I, I broke all the rules, okay? Like, I, I was a great student. Let's <laughs> not forget that story. Um, but I, you know, I, I was always very creative. I was into music. I was already into music. I was already doing DJing work when I was 12 years old, 12, 13, 14. I, I was like the chump high school hit picker. I was like, you know, I was always dabbling. I was doing high school dance, dances and church dances, like DJing. Yeah. So that sort of got, got me going. And, uh, um, and then December 62, I was turning 16. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to get out of school. I need to get out there. I need to get out there. I need to get out there. So January 9th, like right after, I thought, I gotta, I, if I quit, like, you know, you're not supposed to. Don't quit. Whatever you do no. at the school. I mean, there'll be lineups where you, today, then yeah. there was nobody. I, yeah. You know, I had, I had opportunity. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to do a, a high school dance. Not in high school, at a club. So, so basically mimicking American Bandstand. American Bandstand, we used to always go home to watch it on television at 4 o'clock after school. And that was a routine for a lot of people, right? I thought, well, why not do it live? Yeah. So I picked Hump Day, which is Wednesday in the middle of the week, which gives everybody a break. I picked a location which had tons of high schools, which was Euclid and College, because there was... Central uh, uh, Central Tech. There was Harbor Collegiate. There was St. Mike's. There was all kinds of high schools that I could draw from. Well, where was the location? I'm just trying to. It was that right at the corner now. of College and Euclid. Yeah. Which right now is a Starbucks. Okay. And in those days, it was like a dead area. It was like, yeah, it was not the greatest area, right? But it was it was the right location. It was like a dance hall in there, an old dance hall, oh, which was run by the Three Star Dance Club upstairs, which was a, a dance dance yeah. school. Place. So with my own money. I rented the place, and uh, it was like what, 60 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. And then I printed the tickets. I went and sold the tickets. I did, I mean, everything, You're right? Entrepreneur. So that was my first business with, out of my own pocket. I, I, I look at that as my first official thing. So the idea was to open the doors at 4 o'clock, let the kids mm -hmm. in. My buddy and I, we had a, a DJ team called Joey and the Professor. So it was a schoolmate of mine who knew electronics really well, right? Yeah. We built this front. Um, <clears throat> uh, panel in front of the deep so you don't see the, the turntables yeah. just regular turn it was a small amplifier and he says you know let me try something and nobody had ever done this he said let me try something because this guy was a real geek right yeah. um, even to this day I think he is um, he took he took little Christmas lights we put them into those into the, this glittery type uh, board which had Joey yeah. the professor tied it with CKUY radio at the time with their logo and he hooked up one side of the channel uh -oh. to the thing so it pulsated to the With music. The music, wow! Nobody ever heard light boxes in it. That was like the first light box I ever knew of. Wow! Right? Wow. That's and, cool. and everybody liked that. Well, right? yeah. But, so what I would do is, I, it's pretty funny we would do this because you know, it's, it's looking back, go, oh, corny, but you know, <laughs> the curtains would be closed. We were so dramatic. We were so dramatic. Four o'clock, wait till everybody's in. Right? It's dark. We have little tin lights, and then we would open the curtains, and a mirror ball would start. It's yeah. already there, right? The mirror bulb would start and the curtains would open. We'd have these huge sparklers on each side. This is Light going show. away. And the song we played was Dwayne Eddy's Because We're Young. Right? <laughs> and it was like, that was our, our opening, opening. Right? And then we just go into the whole afternoon about playing records. Now, if you, if you watch American Bandstand, they always have a lip sync artist coming on there, part of his record, whatever. Well, guess what? Toronto, 1963. Who the hell was around? Nobody. There was yeah. hardly any stars. There weren't any. Bobby Cortola, you know, there were really hardly anybody. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we put the word out. Come on, somebody send me some people. We need at least one person every Wednesday. Yeah. So this guy came down on a Wednesday. I had a, a friend of mine, Art Snyder, who owned Chateau Records, which was one of the first record labels. And it was a little studio. And he goes, yeah, I got somebody. We just finished doing a record. Uh, I'm going to send him down. Could you maybe use him? 
I said, I don't care. Has he got a record out? That's the main thing, right? Yeah. And, and I, and I, but, so I got the record, and I just started, it's not really pop, it's folky. You know, I goes, I don't care. I just play it, right? So the guy comes down, and uh, I introduce him, and he, and he does lip syncing, and lip syncs his song. It's, it's called Remember Me, I'm the One, mm -hmm. right? And he signs autographs, and that's it. So that was my first do. That artist, Gordon Lightfoot. Wow. Wow. So it shows crazy. you how long I've been Kudos there. Kudos to you on that. All right? Yeah. And then that followed by people like Ardeen Taylor, the Hollywood Art Guys with Ali Oop, and then it was the Beaumont. Oh, now we started picking up some steam. No, were these all Ardeen Taylor? Did he do Indiana once? Indiana once. Was he from Toronto? Yes, he was what? from Toronto. Yes. I didn't know he that. He wrote to Love Child for Supremes. Uh, As a matter of fact, and later it's funny because it's a lot of these people that I start with, I end up working with them. 10, 20 years down the road. Like, Marty Taylor, I used to work with him in the yeah. studio in LA. Drank a lot of vodka out of the jug, eh? <laughs> And you learn things about these guys that you didn't know about before, right? I mean, I could tell you stories, 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 but I mean, everything started there. Hmm. So that became like the most popular. Actually, it's ironic because it was a Wednesday afternoon and it got dark like now, hmm. January 9th. Yeah. yeah. Snowstorm. Yeah. I thought, oh my God, I'm screwed, right? No, we don't come out. Uh, you know, I got out there though, the lineup was like forever. And so I'm having a, 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 a party on, on the 9th. Right now we're looking at maybe the Orbit Room. It's going to be for industry people. So I'm, a lot of big industry people will be there for sure. But it's a small place. I just want to do one small in one. In Toronto? Yeah, yeah. I have, to, I have to commemorate that time that day. Plus that's not far from the location, right? That's a block College. and a half. Yeah. And Tim Notter, see, everything, everything connects, you know, somehow, yeah. some yeah. way. Six and degrees. the reason why I picked that place is because Tim Notter owns are you familiar with the Arbit Room? Yeah, a little okay. bit. It's an upstairs thing. It's a big hangout for like a lot of musicians and like the Dexters and all those guys. And Well, the weird part is that they've been very successful for years and years, right? And I bumped into Tim Notter one time. I don't know if he's listening to this or not, but I bumped into Tim Notter one time and he says, he's so happy to see me. He goes, guys, this you know, if it wasn't for you, man, I wouldn't have this club. I go, what are you talking about? What the hell have you, I got to do with him. this? <laughs> what, what have I got to do with this club, you know? And he goes, let's put, uh, well, let's, let's put it this way. So when you owned Record Week, which was a music industry newspaper, which I, which I ran back in the 70s, he was one of my writers. Oh, right? He was like a junior writer. Yeah. And he was a Rush freak. Like, a re he loved Rush, right? So, so this is what he reminds me of. Anyway, that's what he's reminding you of. And he says, then you remember, if you remember, he says, I wanted so bad to go to that party. Uh, you went to a, a rush party, like a dinner. It was a dinner party, and you and 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 you took me to it instead of anybody else. You took me to it, to to cover it, and I did, and I got to know the guys in Rush. Yeah. Alex is his partner in Orbit. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Small one. Yeah. And you gave him the kickstart. <laughs> did I know that? No, not till he told me that. You know, I forgot all about that. Uh, you know, there's lots of stories like that, but you know that that's where things start. You know. Yeah. You that's you that's that a great launching. story. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Kind of, you know? Now, so 50 years in the business, and we, I, unfortunately it's starting to fill up here, and we don't have too much that's more okay. time to talk. But time 50 years in the business, and you got a party coming up. But what are you working on these days? Uh, I'm still the associate producer of the Beaches Jazz Festival. We're going into our 25th year next year. Oh, yeah. 25 years. All the, all the basic, all the posters you see designs are all mine, usually, which you see for the poster, the image, the images. Um, I still have Hot Toronto Magazine, uh, which is now in its 18th year. It's totally online now, but you can get everything you need to know from all the Southern Ontario that's going on. Now we're expanding into Los Angeles and New York and the Caribbean, so we're going to get more international. And my most recent, I guess, <laughs> venture is the Toronto Chocolate Festival, which is now seven years old. Uh, and we've slowly introduced different events. We started off with the Chocolate Ball Galas which I just finished doing my 11th one. Oh, wow. And, uh, Everybody loves chocolate. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> and uh, for the second year, for the second year we did the Toronto Chocolate Show at Roy Thompson Hall, which just finished like about a month ago. Uh, so that's a growing concern. And then, then we move on to new stuff from the new year. So the new year, I introduce a new uh, network called uh, Chocolate Affairs. Oh. Which will be a whole new site, new website, which will be dangerous. international. Oh yeah, everything you want on chocolate worldwide uh, is going to be on that site. Nice. So we're going to go with that extra, ooh, you know? Yeah. Okay. And um, and then I'm, I'm resurrecting my Night Flight Records company, which I've had also for I've had Night Flight Records since the '80s. That now that seems like a weird concept because it, it seems to me everybody's trying to figure out 
how the music business works these days. Yeah, so why well, would you get into the record business again? It isn't really the record business, it's the music business. Yeah, okay. It's music and entertainment. It's and all those two have become synonymous. Yeah. In, in, the, in the old days, it was just music. Mm -hmm. And it was run by music people. Mm -hmm. Record companies were run by music people, not lawyers. Not till the 70s anyway. The late 70s, lawyers and, and accounts took over and then screwed up everything. Yeah. But up until then, it was run by music people. And most of those people, if they're still around, um, uh, still are, have independent labels who are promoting put them up through the majors, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but I was there through all those years. Trust me, I've been through so many different eras. Um, I mean, I went from being a radio a music director to a recording artist to a publisher to you just everything. And that's why now uh, the new the Night Fight has, has basically uh, reinvented itself. And my son is going to be running it. It's called Night Fight Music and Entertainment. Night Fight. Night Fight. It's, it, well, it was Night Fight Records. And I was the first guy, for, for example, to produce Playboy, uh, Playboy Street Rock album. Oh, wow. Of all the, all the labels in the world, I, they picked me to put out their album. And that, I was the only guy to ever produce that. Now you're bringing your son into this. Well, my son, yeah. So, he, so he'll run it. I'm one of his consultants. Like I've been a consultant for a long time. I call myself a music psychiatrist. I coined that, and I've, I'm the only guy who uses that worldwide. Music psychiatrist. Music psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah. And you know, everybody in the music business, new or old, even if they're seasoned, still needs somebody to talk to regarding what the hell's going on. Yeah. You know, I see it from the outside, and I'm probably the only guy left in the business in 50 years. I'm the only guy left probably in the whole industry in Canada who has done everything pretty well in the business. Let me ask There's you. There's a big difference, you know? Be because you've done that, I just want to ask you, and you kind of mentioned, because it was one thing to drop out of school back in 63, it's another thing today. What, I mean, what have you seen that's different in society, in the music business, Everything. in the economy? The, the largest Everything. Things. So, what's the problem? What's causing things to shift? Is there a solution electronics, to Electronics. Yeah. yeah. Electronics will change everything. I can show you an issue of Record Week I did back in 1975, mm -hmm. and, and my story was that. Uh, one day, the whole record business will be run by electronic companies. Because electronic companies know how to deliver the music. Record companies don't know how to make it. And that's exactly what's happened. Right? And, and what does that say for a musical artist today? Because Music is still music. That'll never change. Okay. It's, it's the delivery the of the music. The revenue game. It's a delivery of the music, the promotion. It changes the whole game. Yeah. Right? Uh, what, the way we used to do it then is not the way we do it now. Yeah. But the basics are still the same. Mm -hmm. You still need the same. Um, a show like American Idol, that would never existed. Imagine if that existed then. Oh my God. Half the artists that are big now probably would never made it. No, they would have And they wouldn't even be here. Yeah. Right? It would have changed that whole system. Yeah, exactly. Same with The Voice. Same with all these shows. They're great shows. They're great vehicles. But what it also tells you, if you look at each one, it amazes me. When they go to a city to audition, how many people are waiting to be auditioned? Yeah. Thousands. I mean, upwards of ten, One fifteen thousand per city. Yeah. That that's ten, fifteen thousand people who think they are talented. Something. Yeah. Now, not to take away from them, but of course, half of them are garbage. But not. I wouldn't even say half. You, I, that, that's not fair. You don't know how many are. But the ones you see on TV that are garbage, that's producer picks. Yeah. It's for television. Because if they didn't have that, they wouldn't have a show. Yeah. Now, when you have. Um, I, have you ever been to an audition like for, for American Idol, for example? No. All right. With well, all those 10,000 people line up, you will have about 10, 15 trailers that all of them are filtered into, right? Mm -hmm. The producers in those trailers are the ones that let you know whether you go on or not. Yeah. And then they end up with maybe what? 50? A handful, yeah. So you have to filter through them. Now, depending on who you got, this guy might have thought you were crap, but that guy or the other one might, might have thought you would have been good. Yeah. So you don't know that's a crapshoot, no matter all the way through. So you've waited two days or a day, whatever. Some of you have taken off work. Some have quit their jobs to, oh, yeah. to do this because they, they wanted it so bad. And then they get ousted, yeah. right? Then again, look at the number of people that are talented and are out there doing like dinner theater and yes, whatever. And they but, don't see the but they of can't. Day. They don't have time to go to those auditions yeah. because they're working. They're not making a lot, but but they can't. It's one or the other, and they can't give up that. So there are those people, and there are the people that never got that chance or whatever. That's what we're there for. Yeah, so I become. It. Yeah. So I become like. The, the Simon Cowell. I mean, I judge stuff now at different right. cities and different events. Yeah. Um, and so my son has judged a bunch of them too. We've got, we're called on all the time to do that. Wow. Um, you're never going to. My opinion is not the final. I mean, I, I, I'll give my opinion, but you don't have to take it. 
I'm giving you based on what I have done in this industry, what I have seen, what I have worked with, and what works and what doesn't work. You know, you could only go by my hi my history. Mm -hmm. I've always had a good ear for music. That's why I was a music director. I've earned 17 gold records. You, you get it, it, that all comes into play, right? Um, and my job is to how do I get help you get from here to here without spending a lot of money and 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 researching and researching to death and not knowing where you're going to go. Yeah. So we set up a whole network of everything from recording studios to managers to producers to to engineers to songwriters to publishers mm -hmm. to lawyers to. Re re rehearsal studios. We have a whole network. So if we say, look, at you know, you got good potential, but I think you should maybe do this, 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 this. Here are the people you go to if you yeah. wish to go to. We're not telling you have to, and that's the network. but when you go, that door is already open for you because they're part of our network. Yeah. You will save money right out of the bat from just by going to them. Yeah. And it's not costing you anything to, for us. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it really should We're the agents. Well, you plus, be I, you yeah, know, I've, 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 I've heard lots of stories. I know people that yeah, have taken their people. money and they've invested in their career and they've gotten nowhere no because they didn't have that wealth of experience. Well, I could, with my experience, for example, I've got two, two particular ones uh, where I have actually produced a, 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 a group, a brother and sister act, like a whole band, mm -hmm. and got them to just about ready to release a record. They, the mm -hmm. oldest kid had put in $30,000 of her own money. Oh, wow. And all they had to put in was another thousand dollars to make it fly. Mm -hmm. The father stepped in, put a stop on everything. Oh no! And I warned them never oh. to do that because that was going to be the death, and it's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. She lost thirty thousand. The other, the other one I had was really ready to go. Yeah. I had deals already European deals and everything ready to go, <laughs> but they listened to them, uh, and they lost mm -hmm. their thirty thousand. Yeah. They would have made their money back no problem, and and more. But you know what? That's what happens. It takes one person to go in who's jealous or doesn't, the choices that want, they you know, thinks, oh, you know, you're always going to get that. Mm -hmm. you know? That's what happened to John Lennon with Yoko Ono. <laughs> no, not really. That didn't happen. I mean, there's different stories there, but I, I don't think that was the case. I, mean, I think it's, it was more of a myth. I don't, listen, Joey, uh, this is great. We're just about out of time okay. here. It's getting loud in here, but I just want to say thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. That was great. Just, and, uh, it was a good pleasure. Good luck with, you. <laughs> with the 50th anniversary, and uh, I just wish Thank you all you. the best. If somebody wants to get in touch, follow up with you, or maybe uh, follow up with the, the record. Uh, they can the uh, email me at joeyc at rogers.com. J O E Y C E E at rogers.com. Or go to my website, joeyc.com. Okay. Everything is on there, what we do. Okay. Right. The whole okay, history. Joey. So, Joey, Joey with a Y, C. It's a Y. C E E. C E E. Ah, you've invented Even that has a story to it. <laughs> There's a story for everything. Trust me. Okay. Well, Joey, thanks for doing this today. It's a pleasure. And uh, Miranda, thanks for doing this. Thank you as well. It's a pleasure, as always, to be here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we're going to wrap up the show and we're going to go join in the fun. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget, check out pbn.ca. Exactly. And you'll the see professional everything. business networking. And uh, come on up to Tula sometime. And my Facebook page, 9049 Social Media. <laughs> Social media marketing? Social media management. Oh, social you media told me. management. We're going to get it right and put it in the we'll credits. So don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Take See care. You <laughs>